Hey, what's up, fellas? Putting this video up to ask a question to the YouTube community. I've been very blessed with an audience of actual engineers and CNC machinists and mechanics and all that. So, what we're looking at right here is a drill press that I built. And I can't show you what I'm going to be actually drilling with it, but the reason I built it is because I've got about 670 holes to drill. And I bought this about three weeks ago, not just to do this job, but there's a lot of other jobs we, we've got we can do with it. But it's the RPMs are just too slow for small drill bits, in my opinion. Um, I didn't read this somewhere. Uh, I just I believe that 65 seconds is a little bit too long. I got it down to 65 seconds per hole in this 3/8 stainless steel. I'm doing some test holes because I need to practice a little bit before I get into the job because I can't be breaking off drill bits in these holes. I'm gonna have to build an EDM machine if I do that, and I don't want to build an EDM machine. It, this is a really nice drill. This is like a $1,400 drill that I've got here, but it's it's only fast at drilling really big holes. I've seen CNC machines drill holes through metal this thick in like five seconds flat. The problem is, kind of find out those bits had fluid coolant holes going through them. So I'm just going to be using cutting fluid. So I want to ask you guys some things about these CNC drill bits with carbide. If you guys have any input or any stories about drilling lots of holes that you think might save me, then please hit me up in the comment section below. Um, any crazy story you got about something that happened, a drill bit breaking off, and how you got it out of there. I'm definitely going to go into this with all the ammunition I have. I'm going to do some practicing. I'm going to post this video. And I also wanted to ask you guys about this motor. This is a pretty awesome little piece of kit right here. It's a water-cooled motor. But I'm under the impression that because I'm not doing any high-torque work, I might be able to get away with uh, just this big heat sink here for quite a while. I don't wanna hook the water up to it unless I have to. And I've noticed, I don't see a lot of you CNC router guys out there with water hooked up to your CNC machines. Maybe you have an air-cooled unit. So if anyone's got any input on that, let me know. But just to take a look at what we got going on here, this will be clamped down to the work with clamps. And this is just a, uh, a var variable frequency drive. It was very easy to hook this thing up. You've got three connections for the motor and the power input. You can uh, use these as speed controllers on any three-phase motor. You can buy a three-phase motor and hook it up to 120 volt AC and make a three-phase machine with these things. It's pretty cool. So. All right, fellas, so I'm gonna do some test holes here. I'm trying a couple with no lubricant. I've seen guys run carbide without any lubricant or coolant before. I just wanna see what it's all about, what's gonna work best. I'm thinking I'm gonna use the uh, cutting oil, but I got it down to 49 seconds, which is not what I've got in mind, but I've only done a couple of holes, so I've gotta get my feed and my speed dialed in right, and uh, I also wanna come back to this video tomorrow and see if you guys got any input for me on what bits you think are the best for this. Um, so far the carbides seem to be doing quicker, but only by 19 seconds. But like I said, I haven't tried slower speed yet. So let me know what you guys think. Essentially this is a 400 hertz machine. And to calculate the RPMs, you multiply the RPMs times 60. One hertz is 60 RPMs because it's one cycle per second. So, let me show you what this thing can do uh, as far as running. It's definitely pretty neat. Oh. So, there's at 100 hertz right there. And this thing is screaming, even though you can't hear it. Now, you can just hit the stop button, and it will shut off. And then hit the run button, 
and it will turn right back on. It has a slow ramp up speed as you've seen there. Um, that slow ramp up speed can be altered. This thing's been configured and it's got some programming that can be done to change that. But for the most part, so this right here is a linear staged actuator, a manual operated one, I should say. And I chose to do it this way without a motor on it and try programming and all that stuff because I felt it'd be the fastest. I want to do my own pecking and all that. Eventually, I'm going to be hooking this up to the plasma table and running the sheet cam router tool to drill the holes, but I don't have time to train for that right now. Game day was last week, so the parts are here. We got to get this show on the road. I am going to eventually look into hooking this thing up to the CNC uh, plasma table, but uh, for now, my questions to you guys basically are, do I really need this water cooling hooked up to this thing? Have any of you guys burnt one of these up? This is an 800 watt motor. That's over a horsepower. And I'm just drilling these little tiny holes, so I don't know. I, I need to know if that would be a bad idea. And any advice you have on the actual, the best RPMs for a 2.3 millimeter drill bit would really hit me up nice. This thing here is like 450 RPMs. And that is just way too slow for a bit that small. You gotta put a lot of pressure to get it to cut. So much pressure that it smashes the carbide bits. Okay, here goes. In the beginning, it just kind of falls all by itself. Well, it was last night. Making a liar out of me. Out of oil. This is basically with no lubrication. I'm going slow this first couple. I think that's it. Yeah, we're through. So it feels like we're nice and squared up. I hope anyway. I'm gonna have to check the clock and how long that took. I can do better with just one hand. I'm gonna try that again. So any machinist out there who have any advice on the, uh, the best RPM I tried and true. I've looked at some feeds and speeds, but these conditions are a little bit different, I think. So, a lot of people say you got to try what works. They, they give you all these charts and they give you all these numbers and then they say, you just have to try what works for you. And, and uh, so that's where I am right now. I'm trying what works. I'm getting ready to start logging this down. I'm going to do like 20 test holes before I get going on the actual job. Because like I said, I can't be breaking no bits off in the hole. And uh, so... I'm gonna get to learn this thing a little bit. And I'm gonna see what you guys come up with about the water cooling on all this. Any of you guys running a water-cooled motor that's just kinda, because you're doing light work with it, is that unnecessary or what do you think? <laughs> 